Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Courtney Ryan, and today I'm gonna to be doing a subscriber Q&A. So I asked my Instagram followers to ask me some questions, and I pulled some from there. I also answered some on my Instagram story, so if you missed it, it's in my Instagram story Q&A highlight. Um, but I'm gonna be answering a good chunk of them here today. So since I am not able to respond to all of you guys individually, I do not offer personal coaching or consulting. I think these Q&As are a great way for me to answer a lot of your guys' most common questions. Um, but help you guys all out at once. I know it sucks that I can't get back to all of you or help you all on an individual level. If you've sent me a personal email, I probably haven't even opened it. I'm telling you I have thousands of unread emails and it's impossible for me at this point to respond to people. So I'm not able to do the personal stuff anymore. I apologize for that. It's completely out of my capacity since it's just me. Again, if you wanna participate in a future Q&A, follow me on Instagram. That is where I ask for the questions. So if you want to participate, definitely submit them through there. So let's get started. All right, question number one is what to do if a girl doesn't answer back for a few weeks? I would say someone who really likes you is never busy enough to not talk to you for a couple of weeks unless they're on a cruise ship and don't have service. So see things for what they are. Like I say so many times, not what you want them to be. If someone is not responding to you for a couple weeks, 99.9% .9 of the time it is because they are not into you. So if you're constantly putting in time and effort and energy and you know double texting this girl, messaging her all the time and she's only giving you responses every few weeks, I think it's best to just move on um, because someone who likes you will want to talk to you and you won't have to pull teeth to get her to talk to you, right? She'll just wanna talk to you. So. This is a question I get all the time or very similar questions. Courtney, I haven't talked to this girl in a couple weeks, but I really like her and I think she likes me. If you need to refer to my she likes you or she doesn't like you videos, or if someone likes you, they'll know. Those are all great videos on my channel to check out. But seriously, see things for what they are and not what you want them to be. You know deep down most of the time when someone does not like you or they do like you. And in this case, I would say she doesn't like you and move on. Number two, tips on getting back into dating as a single father. Oh, this is tough because I think, if I'm being totally honest, I think sometimes it does kind of shrink your dating pool a little bit because there are a lot of, you know, girls and guys out there who don't want to date single parents, which I totally understand. It's a personal preference. But I would say that it is important to be very honest about the fact that you're a dad. And I think people who are willing to date single fathers would appreciate the fact that you are open and honest about that. And it would show that you obviously care about your child and want them to be a part of your life and dating experience. I am obviously not a single parent, so I can't speak from personal experience, but I have been friends with women who have dated um, single dads and some of them had great experiences others did not I know some girls who have kind of taken on the role as a stepmom and they are totally fine with that so don't sell yourself short just because you're a single father there are plenty of girls out there that would have no problem dating a single father same thing as girls out there who don't care about height I know there are people who do care but for every person that does care there's someone who doesn't so keep that in mind. My mom was a single mom and started dating my stepdad when I was very little. Um, and I'm so thankful for the fact that he gave my mom a chance and, you know, dated her even though she had me because he has ended up being one of the best and most influential people in my life. And I really can't picture what my life would be like without him. So if you're watching this and you're hesitant to date single parents, I totally get it. But from a daughter of a single mother, I adore my stepdad and I'm so thankful that he dated my mom. So keep that in mind too. Next question is, what is your favorite date night? I am really not picky about date night. I think any date night is a fun night if you set aside special time for you and your partner. Um, I personally like to go out to dinner and then come home and have just like a chill night, watch some movies, have some hot chocolate and popcorn and just kind of have a little cozy night in. Um, that's kind of my favorite thing to do, but there are a million awesome date options. Next question is best way to start a conversation with a girl if you have anxiety. This one's tough and I have anxiety and I'm an introvert so I totally get it. I think the best thing you can do is kind of just shift your mindset about it. So don't go into it thinking I have to get this girl to like me or oh my gosh she's so pretty she's gonna think I'm stupid. I have to say the perfect thing. Just talk to her like you would talk 
to any stranger, regardless of how attractive you think they are. Don't put her up on a pedestal or think that she's perfect because I guarantee you she has flaws, she's insecure too. We all have things that we're insecure about, so acting like she's perfect or like you have to get her to like you right away is just going to stress you out and make you more anxious. So we wanna alleviate that anxiety by you know, just talking to her like you would any other person. I think the best way to start a conversation depends probably on where you're at, but if you're in public and you've never talked to her before, I think one of the best ways is to make it very natural and just ask her a question. Um, maybe you're in line at a coffee shop and you ask her, have you ever been here before? I don't know if I should get the iced latte or the shake and espresso or whatever the heck it is, whatever you order. Just ask her a question that's very natural um, and gets her to start talking to you without just going up to her and being like, I'm obsessed with you, you're so hot. I guess it kind of depends on the situation you're in too because if you were at like a nightclub or somewhere kind of sexy, it might be okay to go up and be a little bit more direct or to give a compliment. But if you're just in a very natural setting, you wanna make the conversation feel natural too. So keep that in mind. I've done a video all about how to approach um, that I think would be really beneficial for you. So I'll link that down below. Why do girls remain with a guy who isn't good for them? I think a lot of girls have this mentality of I can change him or he'll be different with me. Of course, talking about this on a lighter level is much different than talking about this on a deeper, like more domestic abuse case. I'm not even going to get into that, um, but talking about it on a lighter level, maybe a girl that's dating a bad boy that, you know, is cheating on her or whatever. Um, I think a lot of girls, again, think that they can change guys and we shouldn't wanna change people. We should want to date the person that's right in front of us. And if you don't wanna date that person, you shouldn't wanna date their potential, right? See things for what they are, not what you want them to be. Okay, good quality denim brands for men. This is a good question. And let me know down below if you have a favorite denim brand. But some of my favorites are um, Everlane, Levi's. Teddy just got two new denim brands. I think one is like the unbranded something. I'll put little text in here because I can't remember. And then Hiroshi, Ka Hiroshi Kato, Kato. I can't remember the names or know how to pronounce them clearly. The one pair from the um, Hiroshi Kato or whatever it's called, I'm probably totally butchering that name. They are like the best pair of denim I've ever seen in my life. So I'll be sure to put the little text in here. And if you're a girl watching this, my favorite denim brand for women currently is Mother Denim. I just got a pair of Mother Denim and they are the greatest thing since sliced bread. I wear them all the time. They are so comfortable, so flattering, just all around the best denim ever. I don't think they make men's denim, correct me if I'm wrong, but just wanted to share that for any of the girls that might be watching this. What skincare products do you use? I use all medical grade skincare products at this point. They have been a game changer for my skin. When I was a teenager, I suffered with horrible acne. I had very bad hormonal acne um, and actually going on birth control is what cleared my skin up. So I am like terrified to go off it at some point because I know my skin is just gonna freak out. Um, so that's what's good for my skin. The medical grade skincare is pretty expensive. Normally I get them during like skincare sales at um, the medical spa that I go to. The brands I use specifically are ZO and Skin Better. Adore both of them, they are amazing brands. They also have these little starter kits you can get that aren't that expensive. A couple of them are under $100 for the whole kit that comes with everything you need. And I know that sounds like a lot, but I promise investing in your skin and actually spending money on good quality stuff is an amazing decision. It's one of the best choices I ever made for myself and dramatically changed the texture, pigment, um, and just everything about my skin. Again, keep in mind for skincare, what works for one person might not work for you. Don't fall for all these lame marketing gimmicks on Instagram and YouTube and sponsored content. I'm telling you, it's all just a waste of your money. So if you're going to buy yourself skincare, you should get the nice stuff or else it's just kind of a waste of your money. Some drugstore brands though that I do like are Cetaphil, CeraVe, and La Roche-Posay. I've had amazing experiences with all three of those, although I don't use them in my daily routine because I use med all medical grade skincare. Um, they are really great pro products as well. So this is like a very intricate topic that I could talk about probably all day. I love skincare. I know a ton about it. So I could do a video all about that. But again, it's, it's tough to make a video about skincare because it is so 
individually specific based on the type of skin do you have? Do you have normal combination or oily skin? What are your skincare concerns? So the best advice I could give you if you're someone looking to really invest in your skincare or figure out a nice routine for yourself is to go to a dermatologist or a medical spa and have an esthetician or dermatologist take a look at your skin and recommend specific products for you. Again, I can tell you what I use all day, but it might not work for you. So keep that in mind. Okay, any advice for high school guys and girls? Ooh, I have so much advice and maybe I'll make an entire video about this because if I could give my younger high school self advice, I could talk for days. Um, one of the biggest ones I would say is to not take things so seriously when it comes to romantic relationships. I think high school is just a time to really do as much as you possibly can. Join a bunch of clubs, do all the extracurricular activities, hang out with your friends, go to games. Don't get so caught up in romantic relationships. If I could go back to high school, I would tell myself, Courtney, you don't need to have a serious boyfriend in high school. And I'm not saying you should like sleep around or be promiscuous or any of that because you guys know how I feel about hookup culture. I am not about that life. But I do think high school is a time to really enjoy yourself and spend it with your friends and have a good time. It flies by, it goes by so fast. And while you're in it, sometimes you wish you weren't, but it's only going to be as good as you make it. So I would say get involved as much as you can. And again, don't focus so much on romantic relationships and really just focus on having fun and being with your friends. Um, you know, and kind of figure out who you are because I think when you're in high school and you have a serious relationship or, you know, you're just taking it so seriously, that's a time in your life to really figure out who you are and what you want to be. If you want to go to college, what you want to do for the rest of your life. And if you're in something very serious or you have a serious relationship, sometimes it can really influence your decisions. Um, and I know that some people end up marrying their high school sweethearts and it's wonderful. And I'm not saying don't date anybody in high school, but if I could give my high school self a piece of advice, I would just say, have fun because it's a short three to four years that flies by and you have the rest of your life to um, kind of settle down and be serious. So just have fun and spend time with your friends and be involved. What are some of your favorite ways to help with stress? So without a doubt, the number one thing I would say is exercising, working out, going for a run, Pilates, whatever it is, just some sort of exercise is the number one de-stressor for me. Other things I like are self-care. I like to be a little bit girly, get my hair done, get my nails done, go get a facial or a massage. Um, I just really like girly things like that, kind of pampering myself a little bit. Um, but number one, without a doubt, has to be exercise. Oh, another thing I like to do is to make to-do lists. I am very type A planner, crazy personality. So if I don't have a to-do list or a list of every single thing I need to get done, I get stressed. And I think for me, it helps me to be able to visualize it and see it all in front of me, everything I need to do, um, instead of me just trying to like sort it all out in my brain without writing it down. So whether that be writing in a planner, um, some post-it notes, putting a little note in your phone or working on a Google calendar, whatever it is, I think sometimes just writing things down and kind of seeing everything you have to do can really help too. But if you're someone out there who doesn't work out and you're a very stressful or anxious person, work out. I promise you, I can almost guarantee it will make you feel better. So definitely give it a shot. Do women cheat in a relationship because they are bored? Yeah, sometimes I would say. I think a lot of times um, they maybe aren't getting the attention or validation that they used to. And I would say this is the same for men and women. They aren't getting the attention or validation that they used to get from their partner and so they look elsewhere. Uh, maybe it's because they're bored. Maybe it's because like they want more attention. What else? Maybe there's a lack of intimacy. There are a million and a half reasons why people cheat, so I'm not gonna go into all of them. I don't think any of them condone cheating. I think if you're going to cheat, you should just end the relationship. Um, I know some people work through cheating, but yes, to answer your question, I do think a lot of women will cheat because they are bored or not getting the attention or validation that maybe they used to, and so they seek it elsewhere. And that's not a jab to women specifically. I just generally think um, a lot of women are so used to getting validation and attention from strangers or random people online or their partner when they first start dating and then when they don't get it anymore, they crave it and they outsource their happiness from everyone else and can't create it for themselves. So they're constantly grabbing to whoever is giving them attention. 
What does it mean when a girl says, you're too good for me? So I feel like I would need a little bit more context, but I think I can break this one down into two answers. Number one, she doesn't like you and is trying to just kind of let you down easy without hurting your feelings. So by saying, you're too good for me, I don't deserve you or something like that, she's just trying to let you down easy, right? Number two, she is actually genuinely insecure and is seeking that validation and approval from you. Uh, maybe words of affirmation, maybe for you to tell her, no, you're perfect, whatever. I think a lot of girls do that too. So again, I feel like I would need a little bit more context on the situation. Is a long distance relationship worth it? A relationship is tough as is, right? When you add the long distance into it, it becomes 10 times harder. And I'm saying that as someone who has been in a long distance relationship, it is very tough. And again, speaking from personal experience, I would never do it again. It makes every little thing a big thing. Something that would just be a, a small deal, wouldn't be that big of a deal in a regular relationship becomes a huge deal when you add all that distance. You have to have very clear expectations and communication and you really have to both be on the same page. And I think if neither one of you has a goal to move by each other, then you're wasting your time. I think if you, if either you or the person you're seeing is not planning on moving eventually to be by each other, then like, what are you doing? You're just totally wasting your time. So keep that in mind. I, some people make long distance work. I've known people who are in college in long distance relationships, and I've seen some of those work out. That was the situation I was in, and we were not on the same page. I was being cheated on and lied to. It was just a nightmare. So obviously I'm a little bit biased when it comes to the long distance. And that's why I say you have to be on the same page. You have to have clear expectations and communication in order for it to work or it will simply not work. And again, if neither one of you have any plans to move to where the other person is at, then you're seriously wasting your time. Should a college student dress up or is it acceptable to go in PJs? That's a funny question because when I look back at my college experience and I think about some of the things my friends and I would wear to class, seriously questionable guys. We would wear leggings with sweatshirts, tennis shoes, a hat. We just looked awful all the time. And I will say this, whenever I would dress up or look good, I felt like I did better in class. It's kind of that look good, feel good mentality and the effort that you put in and the way you show up for yourself, I think does play a huge role in your productivity and the outcome that you get. So if I was going back, I would say definitely, you don't have to go all out and wear like a suit or anything crazy, but I would show up for yourself and wear something at least slightly presentable. I would never, ever, ever recommend wearing PJs. And looking back, I would probably not wear what I used to wear to class because again, it was questionable. And I just felt like a slob and a piece of crap when I would look so bad going to class. And I know not everyone is like this, but I know some of you can probably relate. Even working from home, if I'm like sitting in my pajamas all day, sometimes I just don't get as much done. I'm not as productive. Um, but if I get, you know, dressed up a little bit, I put some real human clothes on, maybe I, you know, spruce myself up a little bit, I'm more productive. So it's, again, it's kind of that look good, feel good thing. Why do girls cancel or flake on a date at the last minute? There are so many reasons why. Number one could be you're just the attention guy you're just the fill-in guy she wants to text you all the time to get your attention or validation but doesn't actually want to hang out with you this one happens a lot i see it all the time guys are just texting these girls forever and then the girl will never hang out with them because they just want attention from you that one happens a lot maybe she's not interested sometimes i would say she could actually be busy if she flakes once she might be busy i would say if she does it again goodbye if someone flakes on me twice or cancels last minute twice you are absolutely gone you're done <laughs> you blew your chance um things can happen and i think it's okay to have grace with people sometimes but once it happens more than once or twice eh, you gotta cut them out um, but most of the time i would say girls flake at the last minute because they realize that they don't want to go and they don't like you and they probably just want your attention from texting what does a romantic spark mean? A girl ended things with me because of this. This is interesting because I think this whole romantic spark thing is totally romanticized and made up. I don't think there is such thing as a romantic spark. I think a romantic spark is really just compatibility and familiarity with a person. Have you ever gone out with someone and you feel like you just clicked instantly and it was, you know, it was magic from there? That is because you felt some sense of relatability or familiarity or connection with this person. Um, 
and it doesn't really have anything necessarily to do with romantic spark. Now, I think you can go out with someone and just not be romantically attracted to them. Maybe you are not physically attracted to them. Maybe you, you know, feel like your personalities don't really mesh in that way or feel like you could ever be in a romantic relationship. Maybe you just see them as more of a friend. But I think this whole like romantic spark and just really romanticizing it is like totally a Disney movie thing and it's not like love at first sight is a real thing that is not a real thing I'm telling you right now if a guy told me he loved me the first time he saw me I would run for the hills that is terrifying to me because a lot of people can't differentiate between uh lust and love and then also these like feelings of newness and freshness endorphins dopamine serotonin running through your body um people have a hard time differentiating and they confuse that and those like very intense feelings in the beginning for love when it is not in fact love at all. So when people say they believe in love at first sight, I literally think to myself, you are a nutcase. So keep that in mind. Next question and the last question I have is, I developed a lazy eye a few years ago and lost confidence because of it. Any tips? This is tough and I actually had a friend who had a lazy eye and she was so insecure about it and it really, you know, had a huge impact on her confidence. So I've watched, you know, someone I care about experience this and it's tough when something happens to you that you haven't always had, you know, you don't really know how to deal with it because it's a new phenomenon, right? So like if someone got in an accident and they got a huge scar on their face that they weren't used to having, they might feel a little bit insecure about it. But one thing I want you guys to realize is that while looks might be a role that's played in initial attraction, looks are not everything. And there are so many more important things about you than the way that you look. If my looks are the most interesting thing about me, how boring is that? right? I'm pretty sure everyone has preferences of what they would prefer their person um, or partner to look like. It doesn't necessarily mean that every single person is going to have the same preferences or care. So some girls might not date you because you have a lazy eye, but other girls would be able to look past it and not care. So keep that in mind. Also, if it makes you feel a little bit better, at one point I believe that I had a little bit of a lazy eye or I definitely had an astigmatism in one of my eyes but not the other one. So it made me look like I have a lazy eye and actually you might be able to tell by looking at me. And it's something and I, it, it is what it is. It's just I am who I am. I get on camera, I show up, I still present all my stuff even though I've got some little issues going on too. I have little insecurities that I notice about myself that other people might notice, they might not notice, but it really doesn't matter because I still am who I am and I show up and I'm confident and I think that that will get you a lot farther than focusing solely on your insecurities. To understand also that every single person out there has insecurities regardless of what they look like, some of the most beautiful people are the most insecure people. So try to focus less on your insecurities and more on your strengths or things that make you feel good about yourself and confident and know that your lazy eye does not define you. There are plenty of amazing people out there that have have lazy eyes and girls that would 100% overlook it and not care at all. So keep that in mind. All right, guys, that is all I have today for my little q and I hope you all found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to be in the loop for when I release new content. If you haven't already, be sure to follow me on Instagram at Courtney Christine Ryan. If you want to participate in a future Q&A, that is how to do it. I will post on my story and ask you guys to submit Q&A questions. So again, just to reiterate, that is the best place to ask me a question. I cannot reply to every DM. I do not respond to any personal emails because I do not offer personal consulting or coaching and it takes a lot of time that I sadly just do not have so I love you all I care about you I wish I could get back to all of you but it's just not realistic for me again so the best place to contact me is Instagram or when I do a Q&A so keep that in mind as always thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all next time